Hello students, this is Dr. Fezan Mirza. I'm covering the question regarding labor congenital amoriosis. This is an autosomal recessive eye disease. Uh, we have blindness occur uh, in childhood because the visual pigment cannot be resynthesized. So this question came in October, November 2018. This is video 41 of the question. So the, the question gives you the information of labor congenital amoriosis, which is an autosomal recessive eye disease. Uh, this results in eye disorders, including severe loss of vision at birth. So they are not born blind, but uh, at birth, at times at birth, uh, and at times with, uh, with, with, as they are growing up, they lose their vision. So LCS is successfully being treated by gene therapy using a virus instead of a plasmid as a vector. So here you are not using plasmid as a vector, rather you are using a virus. So keeping that in mind, let's move on. Adeno-associated virus, we know this is the most commonly used virus for, uh, for gene transfer. It's, it's, it, it doesn't evoke an immune response. Plus, uh, it, do, it doesn't go, it, it will not go and randomly insert its, its DNA into the genome of the host cell. So it's non, uh, it, would, it, would, it will not uh, trigger uh, cancer, unlike uh, the other retrovirus or lentivirus, which initially were used to treat uh, the diseases, SCID, etc. So AAV is the, is the success of most virus. We know that by the fact, as a fact. So uh, this AAV vector containing the therapeutic allele, therapeutic allele means that this is the dominant allele or the dominant allele would be normal. So if the dominant allele is normal, it's a therapeutic allele which were injected directly into the retina, the layer at the back of the eye containing photoreceptor cells, people who had been blind from a young age were able to see again. So this information is given to you regarding LCA that these individuals are, 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 are blind. And uh, when this AAV virus is inserted or injected in the retina, they, this, uh, this delivers the virus there and the virus delivers the gene there. The dominant gene is delivered, the dominant allele is delivered in front of the gene and these people start to see. All this their life, otherwise they have been uh, blind. So moving on, there's a risk associated with injection method used to deliver the vectors as it might cause retina to detach and damage vision. So this is the risk mentioned to you. So obviously when you are injecting something in the retina, you can damage it even further. This method of delivery was first used for LCA before being tested or trialed on other retinal diseases that gradually reduce vision of people as they grow older. So this is a tricky sentence here. This sentence actually tells you that, uh, that the first of the diseases that they, they try to treat using injections as, as, uh, as a mode of delivering an allele, uh, actually was first used on LCA. Why? Because the patients were already blind. Whereas in other case, in other retinal diseases, in other retinal diseases that gradually reduce the vision of people as they grow older, means that these people are not blind to begin with. They already have a vision. And as they are growing older, they become blind because of some retinal diseases. This actually what's mentioned here. So they are saying that LCA treatment was, uh, was the first it was tried, this injection method was tried first on, on LCA patient rather than people who were growing, getting uh, blind as they were growing older. So keeping this in mind, let's move on. Suggest so the main steps involved in creating in creating recombinant DNA for this example of gene therapy. So we know the dominant allele is required for this process and the mRNA is collected from the cytoplasm of a healthy cell and cDNA is then synthesized. We know cDNA is a template, is made using a template of mRNA. The gene, and, and we know the enzyme reverse transcriptase is used here. The gene can be synthesized from gene library. And yes, this is possible now as well that you can synthesize this from gene library or you take it either, either of these. So one of these processes can be used. Once the gene is ready, you take the promoter of the gene, it's self-sided together because the promoter must be there together with the gene when it's being added. Uh, furthermore, they are saying DNA ligase is used to, you can, mean, you can just mention DNA ligase is used for joining the gene, jo joining the gene. PCR is used to amplify the gene because PCR, you know, it, it just amplifies the gene so that it becomes of a, of a large quantity. So it's easy to handle in experiments. Explained by the fact that LC is an autosomal recessive genetic mutation makes it suitable for treatment with gene therapy. So all autosomal recessive genetic diseases actually can be targeted uh, with a therapeutic way and can be aimed at treating uh, using a gene therapy because the dominant allele can be inserted. So in this case, we'll just mention that since the abnormal allele is a recessive allele, a single dominant allele can be inserted and the recessive allele would not affect the person any longer because the dominant allele has been delivered. Suggest so why retinal injection method of gene delivery, gene therapy was used uh, for LCA before it was trialed for other retinal diseases that gradually reduce the vision of people as they grow older. So yes, people with LCA already are blind. So when they're already blind, so even if you are, in, you are using injection, and just say, for example, if there is a, there is a damage to retina further, so they will not become even more blind. So they are already blind. 
So this this actually tells you that their uh, their blindness would not get worsened further because retinal detachment can occur when you're using injections. So the retinal injection method would not make this any more worse for them. Other retinal diseases that with gradual vision loss would have been more risky if retinal injection was used on them because they were these other people who were suffering from other diseases and they were growing older. The, it, this, this, actually, this part actually refers to this, this paragraph given uh, in the question that people who are gradually losing their vision as they're growing older. So they, if, you, if you would have tried this, this injection method directly on them, so probably you would have damaged their retina and if they were just gradually losing their vision, they would just go blind altogether if the retina is getting, gets damaged because of using an injection. Now, furthermore, this is a, this is, they are saying that how they improve the virus factor for gene therapy. Step one, the scientists use a special form of polymerase chain reaction. This form of PCR causes mutations in DNA sequence of AVV uh, by base substitution. So you can call base substitution, recall the base substitution that a base replaces another base. Step two, the virus containing different base substitutions were, uh, were tested. This was done using different viruses to deliver new gene. The gene was green fluorescent protein. We know green fluorescent protein, GFP, is inserted as the screening tool uh, into the photoreceptors of mice using the retinal injection method. The best virus known is 7M8, caused the photoreceptor cell in the retina of mouse to fluoresce brightly. Even, the even when the recombinant virus was injected into the fluid inside the eye, instead of retinite cells. So you can see that this virus, 7M8, this can be ins inserted into the fluid in the eye, and yet this fluid will eventually take the virus to the, to the retina, which means that now retinal injection can be replaced. So there, this technique allows the virus to be sent into the fluid only. So, and by the mouse, uh, the, the cells were fluorescing brightly because the GFE protein was already there. So that was a screening marker. Step four. 7M8 virus, 7M8 virus was used to cure mouse with LCA by injecting this virus containing therapeutic allele into the fluid inside the eye of the mouse. Again, you can say that it has been inserted. So just how errors occurring during PCR can cause base substitution mutation in the DNA sequence. At A, we, we know that DNA polymerase that we are using, it's not a DNA polymerase that we use uh, in our cells or that, the, that, that uh, which are there in the host cell, rather we use tech polymerase. So there is no proofreading mechanism occurring there. So incorrect base gets added. This cause base, may, uh, base pair mismatch. And with the template strand of DNA, since the tech polymerase is used, there is no proofreading because tech polymerase will not proofread the DNA replicated as the DNA gets replicated. So uh, in the, uh, which is in, this, this tech polymerase is required in the elongation stage. So the same mistake is getting copied several times, uh, high, high, Temperature speeds up the, the replication process that increases the chance of more mistakes. So yes, this this uh, caused the chance to uh, have more mutations and the mutations that, that they keep on replicating and transferring further. Explain why photoreceptor cells of the mouse fluoresce in step three. So why why they fluoresce? The 7 m 7 m 7 m M8 virus at GFP gene. The virus reached the retina and entered the photoreceptor cell. GFP gene got gets expressed, and the green fluorescence is seen as GFP is produced uh, in those cells. So, if 7M8 virus is successfully taken by the retinal cells, the cells will start to glow green. Predict the impact of 7M8 AAV on treatment of age related retinal diseases. So, yes, this, this actually shows that it will decrease the risk and increase the chance of gene therapy as a treatment of age related retinal diseases because here you are not using injection directly into the retina. You're not injecting the virus in the retina. You are rather, you are injecting it in the fluid in the eye. And once it's in the fluid in the eye, it would diffuse all through the fluid and it would go into the retina to uh, enter into the retinal cell. Here I'm taking this to another question, October number 2019, medium 43. And this question is about homologous pairs. So the house mouse, this name is given as it's having a deployed number of 40 chromosomes. Figure 2.6 shows six of these chromosomes. So six of these chromosomes can be seen. Identify one pair of homologous chromosomes on figure 2.1 drawing circle around two chromosomes. So the homologous chromosome must have the similar appearance and same batting pattern. So these can be shaded or this, and this can be shaded because they are similar or this, and this can be done. So any of these two will be, will be done. So figure 2.2 shows the bending pattern of chromosome pair 11. Uh, the bending pattern is obtained by staining. You can see this is a homologous pair. The order of the genes and the, and the uh, presence of the alleles um, actually is the gene locus the same. So that's what the homologous pairs are all, all about. Explained by the chromosomes so is figure 2.2 is described a homologous chromosome. They have same battings. They have same shape, size, number of bases. The number of gene locus is the same. Same order of genes on the chromatid. So all these can be mentioned. Avoid using the answers in bullets. It's better to write the answer in continuous prose uh, rather than stating in bullets. 
state the number of chromosomes that are present in this is spermatozoa. So we know the spermatozoa is a gamete. So it's a gamete. So if the diploid number given to us is 40, then the, then the, the haploid number would be 20. So we just mentioned 20 here. The gametes are produced by meiosis. The gametes are genetically different. There is a random fusion of gametes at fertilization. Explain why meiosis is important in the life cycle of this organism, apart from producing genetically different gametes. So why is meiosis important? So meiosis is a reduction division. We know the number of chromosomes get halved. And because the number of chromosomes get halved from 2n, the cells uh, have cr the chromosome set n. And as they are preserved, they are produced, the parents, uh, the, this prevents this prevents the doubling of the chromosomes and offering. So when two gametes, which are having n and each, when they fertilize, they, they get fertilized. Uh, when one gets fertilized with the other, you get the offspring of 2n. So that's the main importance that the number of chromosomes stays the same. Explain how random fusion of gametes lead to expression of a rare recessive trait in this condition. So we can just mention that both gametes may have the same recessive allele. And by chance, by chance, if these gametes come together, homozygous recessive offspring would be produced, having recessive trait expressed in the phenotype. So yes, that's the condition that can that can uh, be found. A mutation causing coats of mice to be woolly in appearance is a gene located on a chromosome 11. The mutation caused very shortened polypeptide product Mice with woolly coat phenotype have longer fur than mice with normal coats. Explain how a base substitution mutation can lead to a very shortened polypeptide product. So you can just recall how a stop codon can form early in the sequence because of the, because of the substitution of a base in the existing sequence. And because of that, a shortened polypeptide will be made. And frame shift, frame shift does not occur because it's just a shortened polypeptide because a stop codon comes early. We call that as a nonsense mutation. So uh, the short polypeptide is made and the 3D shape will be altered. It would just have very fewer masses as compared to an actual, uh, uh, actual polypeptide, which would have been much longer. The inheritance of fully coat color characteristic was investigated. Draw a genetic diagram to show cross between two heterozygous parents. So it's two heterozygous mean that you have to use both of them as the capital letter and small letter and uh, with, uh, with normal code. So normal code means that this is dominant condition. So they will have the normal code. So it is capital A, small a, parental genotypes can be mentioned as this capital A, small a. And again, the, the other can be mentioned as capital A, small a. So when you make gametes, you just, you just uh, split them separately into separate gametes. So capital A comes in one gamete, small a goes in the other gamete. Similarly for the other capital A goes in one gamete, small a goes in the other gamete. Now you just cross them. So when these are crossed together, the outcome is capital A, capital A together. When you cross this and this, it comes out to be capital A, small a. When this cross with this, this is capital A, small a again. And when the small a, small a comes in contact, this is bully. So this is the chance, this is the chance, the, uh, this is, you can see, there are three chances of the offspring getting normal and one chance of it getting bully. So there's a 25% chance of bully uh, coat color in this uh, cross. I hope these questions were helpful for you. That's it from my side, thank you so much.